Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I am now answering question number three from the Pure Mathematics P3 International A Level Ed Excel June 2021 exam. And this question here is all about integration. The first question here is asking us to integrate this expression 12 over 2x minus 1 squared with respect to x, giving your answer in its simplest form. Now, here we have a situation where we can write this in the form with the uh, negative index on the numerator you can write it as the integral of 12 times and i can actually write the 12 on the outside of the integration sign i don't have to i just i mean had a habit of taking out the multiple like that 12 times and you got 2x minus 1 to the power of negative 2 and we want to integrate that with respect to x so we've just basically written that as a negative index as we know 1 over a to the power of n is the same as a to the power of minus n same goes with this whole bracket now what we need to do now is integrate this now this can be integrated by what's called reverse of the chain rule or sometimes called by recognition where basically we see that the 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 the, the expression is multiplied by a term which is the differential of what's inside it so the differential of what's inside it is a constant. If you differentiate 2x minus 1, you get 2. Outside of the, or multiplied by this uh, bracket, is um, something which is a constant. It's like 12. Okay, So it's like a constant, just like the differential of this. It doesn't have to be exactly the same value as it. It has to be the same order. Okay, So you differentiate this. You get a constant. Outside, it's being multiplied by a constant. You can use the reverse of the chain rule. For example, if this was an x squared term in here, and you differentiate it, you'll get an x term. If it was to be multiplied by an x term, you would be able to integrate by um, recognition or reverse of the chain rule. So this is a case where we can do that. So what we do to, to, to integrate this, you have 12 times. Okay, there's 12 outside. Then you're going to add 1 to this power. So this is going to become 2x minus 1 to the power two to the power of minus 1. You add 1 to minus 2, you get minus 1. Then divide this by the the... Um, new power which is minus one and also by the differential of what's inside which is two okay so you add one to the power divide by that new power and also you divide this by the differential of what's inside the function okay that's how you can do reverse of the chain rule so you're going to have 2x minus 1 to the power of 1 over minus 1 times 2 now the 2 will cancel with the 12 give you 6 don't forget your plus c because it's a uh, indefinite integral so you have 6 and divided by minus 1 so it's going to be minus 6 times 2x minus 1 to the power of minus 1 plus c that would be fine as your answer if you want to go further and write this as 6 minus 6 over 2x minus 1 to the power of 1 you don't need to write the power of 1 here plus c that's also fine and there we have the answer to question number 3 part 1 okay pretty simple reverse of the chain rule type of question um integration now part two okay it's telling us to write this algebraic fraction in terms in the form a plus b of x plus two so this is an improper fraction because the order of the numerator and the denominator are equal if the order of the numerator is greater than or equal to the new order of the denominator then it's an improper algebraic fraction and can be expressed expressed as a mixed number you could th say so you have the whole number part which is your a plus b over x plus two so there's a number of ways we could do this we could write this in this form in a number of ways something simple like this the way i would probably do it would be by rewriting the numerator so what i'll do is i'll write 4x plus 3 over x plus 2 equals what i'm going to do is i'm going to write the denominator as x plus 2 and i'm going to write x plus 2 in the numerator I'm going to say, okay, how do I end up with a 4x? Well, I have to multiply by 4. So if I multiply this by 4, I'm going to get 4x plus 8. Okay, so 4x plus 8 if I do this. So I've got to take away from this 5 to give me 3. If I expand this, I'll have 4x plus 8. I want 4x plus 3. If I do this, if I take away 5, that will give me 4x plus 8 minus 5. So these are exactly identical to each other. Okay, this is 4x plus 8 minus 5, which is 4x plus 3 over x plus 2. They're exactly the same. But I've, d I've written it in such a way that I can now split this into two separate fractions. Two separate fractions with the same denominator of x plus 2. So I have 4 times x plus 2 
divided by x plus 2 minus 5 over x plus 2. The x plus 2s cancel here, so I'm left with 4 minus 5 over x plus 2. So I have got my expression written in this form. That's one way of doing it. That's one way of doing it. I'll show you another way of doing it as well by algebraic long division, where you take the denominator and put that on the outside. And in the numerator, you have 4x plus 3. And then you can basically just do long division. So x goes into 4x four times. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract these two lines. You have 4x minus 4x is 0. 3 minus 8 is minus 5. Nothing left to bring down. So x plus 2 goes into 4x plus 3. 4 times remained a negative 5. Okay, so what we can say is, all right, if you're doing 4x plus 3 over x plus 2, so x plus 2 goes into this four whole times, and then you've got minus 5 as your remainder, so it's minus 5 over the original denominator. So that's, of course, the same answer. And there's a third way we could also do it, and the third way is by using what's called, some, it's called, um, um, Comparing coefficients. So I can say that 4x plus 3 over x plus 2 is equal to, and they've told us the form, which is a plus b over x plus 2. Now, if they didn't give us the form and you had to do, you wanted to do this in this way, you could easily work out that this is the form of the answer because um, the difference between the orders gives us the order of the whole number part. So the difference between the orders here is zero. They are of the same order. This is linear, this is linear. So if the difference between the orders is a um, is basically um, the same, okay, the difference between them is, is the order of one, or order of one, order of one, gives you, if you subtract them, you get zero. So it's going to be a constant, the whole number part. And the denominator above it in the mixed number, the, above the denominator, this has to be of an order less than the denominator, and this is linear, one less than a linear is a constant. So both the whole number part and the remainder must be both constants in this case. And if you want to now solve this, what we do is we multiply both sides of this identity by x plus 2, in which case the x plus 2 on this side will disappear. And in this case, this will become a times x plus 2 plus b. And then we can then, for example, we can say compare the x's. So if we compare the x's, on this side you have 4, on this side you have ax, there's no other x terms, so a equals 4. And if we compare the constants, you say on this side we have 3. If we expand this, we'll have 2a plus b as our constants. We know a is 4 already, so we have 3 equals 2 times 4 plus b. So 3 equals 8 plus b, therefore b is equal to 3 minus 8, which is negative 5. Therefore, you're going to say a is 4 and b is negative 5, so minus 5 over x plus 2. Okay, so I mean, these are three separate ways of, you know, um, expressing this in the form given. I personally prefer the first way for something simple like this. In general, the second way is going to be the most commonly used, um, especially when it's a bit more complicated than this. But there's also this method here of comparing coefficient so any one of those three methods is perfectly fine to use in order to find what this is going to be as a mixed number okay so that leads us on to question two part b where it tells us hence meaning using what we just found which is written over here find using algebraic integration the exact value of this so we have to use the fact that we split this up into this form in order to integrate this between the limits of minus 8 and minus 5 and giving our answer in its simplest form. So first of all, I'm going to write this as between minus 8 and minus 5. And we're going to integrate 4 minus 5 over x plus 2 within those limits with respect to x. Okay, now what you have to realize here is I'm not going to write this as 5 times x plus 2 to the power minus 1. Because if I did that and I add 1 to the power, I'll have 5 times x plus 2 to the power of 0 divided by 0. I'll be dividing by 0, which is undefined. So I can't use that method in order to do this. I have to use um, basically the, the lin function. Why? Because the integral of 1 over x 
is equal to the lin of the modulus of x. Okay, that's one of the things that we should know. Okay, we can't integrate 1 over x in the normal way because you add 1 to the power, divide by the power, you're dividing by 0. But we found that when we differentiate lin x, we ended up with 1 over x. Okay, so the integral of 1 over x is equal to the lin of the modulus of x. And it's important that we put the modulus of x. I've, I've explained that in um, one of the previous videos I've made, uh, why we actually put the modulus of x here. Okay, I've explained that in one of the earlier videos, um, which you can refer to. I'll maybe put a link to that video at the end of this. But here we have um, the integral of 4 minus 5 over x plus 2. So to integrate this, we're going to, Write your square bracket, 4 becomes 4x, and this becomes minus 5 times the lin of the modulus of x plus 2. Okay, and I don't put plus c because I have my limits of minus 8 and minus 5. Okay, so now I need to substitute these values into this and then proceed with finding my answer in its simplest form. So I'm going to put 4 times minus 5 minus 5 times the lin of the modulus of minus 5 plus 2 minus and then i'm going to put a bracket to protect it from the minus for now 4 times negative 8 minus 5 times the lin of the modulus of negative 8 plus 2 I close that bracket no plus c here because we have a definite integral that's going to give you negative 20 and you're going to have a minus 5 times lin of the modulus of negative 3 minus, and this is going to give you negative 32 minus 5 times the lin of the modulus of negative 6. Now, the lin of the modulus of negative 3 is a lin of 3. Okay? Because we can't find the lin of negative 3, we have to write this as a lin of 3 because we're finding the modulus of negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. The lin of negative 3 actually doesn't exist. It's undefined. And here you're going to have minus, one, minus times minus, which is plus. So you have plus 32. And you're going to have plus 5 times the lin of 6. Okay, so you have minus 20 plus 32, which gives us 12. And I'll write it in this way so it's easier to deal with. You have 5 lin 6 minus 5 lin 3 what i'll do is to make it easier just to put my equals here i'll have this as 12 plus i'll take 5 as common then i have lin 6 minus lin 3 and i'll use my law of logarithms when i have a subtraction um, you know of, of the log to the same base which this is log e log e lin okay um i'm gonna this can combine together as a division so this is five times the lin of six divided by three which is two okay so you end up with 12 plus five lin two and there's the final answer in its simplest form okay and that, there we have it if you wrote it as 12 plus lin of two to the power of five which is 32 that would also be acceptable okay but this is five okay so there we have the answer to three part b Okay, so the important point here is when you have something like this where the bracket would become to the power of a negative one on top, you can't use that method. You have to use lin. Okay, um, so five lin, and you have to use a modulus of that expression. You can't just use it on its own. It's the modulus of that expression. Okay, okay, so that's the end of this question, which is question number three from the P3 paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found by clicking on the link that will appear somewhere over here at the end of the video other questions about integration in p3 will be appearing in this link over here p3 is um, um so integration is quite new to this it didn't used to be in the old c3 before so um it's something that was only in the c4 now it's in part of it is in, in p3 and part of it now is in p4 um so this type of thing like uh, integration by recognition and this lin type of integration and also integration dealing with trig functions also is something which appears in p3 now um, you can subscribe to my channel in this link over here you can find other p3 papers you might want to watch linked on the top on the cards and in the description you can find links to other um, in international a-level lxl papers such as p1 p2 p4 m1 s1 also some igcse cambridge papers there's links to questions from those i've answered thank you for watching and see you soon